Hey, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to do something a little bit uh, different for the channel. We're going to run through some essential add-ons that you need to install straight out of the gate when you've done your first installation of Home Assistant. So what is an add-on? So an add-on is an application that extends the functionality of Home Assistant and provides a new function, a service, or an integration that is not present in the base installation. Now, we're going to go through the basic add-ons that you should install from scratch. However, there are many add-ons from the add-on store, but we'll keep this to the essentials. I will list at the end of the video some of the advanced add-ons that you should install later on that will provide you great functionality and be able to enhance your experience into Home Assistant. We're going to run through this on a fresh installation of Home Assistant, so there'll be no add-ons. This is what you'll be presented with when you've done your first installation. So let's get into it. So the first add-on we're going to add on is going to be the SSH and Web Terminal. This will allow us to access into the back end of Home Assistant without the GUI. It's there as a fallback situation to make sure that if we cannot gain access to Home Assistant, we can still gain access through to the back end to be able to bring it online with changes to the configuration. To be able to install this, go to our settings, go to add-ons. As you can see, we don't have anything added at this point in time. Press the navigation bar to go across into the uh, add-on store. You can search for terminal if you wish, and it will bring up the one advanced SSH and web terminal. Click install. Wait a few minutes. Once the installation has been completed, make sure you turn on watchdog. This will restart the add-on if there is a crash. Very important. Move into the configuration. You can leave has IO if you require, but let's just augment it with the word test to make it unique and set a password. Once we've updated that, we just need to press save. Move back into information, press the start button, verify it's running. Now we need to be able to access that from a client. Go to putty.org, download the application, pick your relevant installer and install. Start the putty application. It's a very simple front end and it will ask for the IP address. Press open. If this is your first time that you're accessing it, it will come up with this certificate validation. We want to press accept. Putty will now ask you to log in with the credentials that you saved for your add-on. Now you'll see the usual banner that you receive when you start up Home Assistant. Although in this example, I showed you how to use Putty, there are many alternatives available. Some of them are on screen now. Next, we'll do an installation of Visual Studio Code. This is a fantastic application that allows you to edit your YAML code directly from the web browser. I have done a video for this one already. I'll put a link in the description so you can enter that one. So we'll move through this pretty quickly. Settings, add-ons, go back into the store, search for Visual, you should find it straight away. Select it, install. Once the add-ons have been installed, Turn on the watchdog, add into sidebar. There is no configuration required on this. Press start. Once it's started, validate in top right-hand corner. Add-on is running. Move across to the navigation bar on the left-hand side, studio code. As you can see, we're now in our configuration file. The next add-on that I'd recommend that you install as the essentials is Samba Share. SambaShare is different from Terminal and SSH in that it doesn't give you command line entry, but SambaShare will allow you to access the Home Assistant file system from another machine. Benefits of this will be the fact that you should be able to use your other machine to copy files to your Home Assistant or copy files away from your Home Assistant. To add the SambaShare, add-ons, add-on store, search for Samba, Samba share, install. I'd recommend you turn on the watchdog to make sure that this one runs all the time. Now there will be some configuration required for this. You can change the username to whatever you wish and then give it a password. Scroll down, press save. Go back into info, 
press start, validate the add-on is running. To access the Home Assistant file system, go into File Explorer and type in backslash backslash IP address. Press enter. You should now see Home Assistant's back end. Samba Share and Home Assistant Google Backup are both components of a video I have done also for doing the 321 backup strategy for your Home Assistant. I'll put the links in the video below. Home Assistant add ons, add on store, you'll need to add a repository. Click on repository. In the other video, it shows you the repository that you need to add. Search for Google, you'll find the backup. Install. Once the installation is complete, make sure you turn on Watchdog. This is one you will want to require to be running all the time. I like to show it in the sidebar as well so that I can make backups if required. Move through into configuration. I'll leave this a default at the moment. However, you set these up however you require them to be set up. Move back into info. Press start. Confirm that the add-on is actually running. Open the web UI. Go through to authentication of Google Drive. Select the account that you wish to back up to. Press continue. As per the previous video, you can send the credentials. I tend to find this one doesn't work. So copy the credentials at this point. Move back into the Home Assistant, paste in your credentials, press save. It will now ask you if you want to send reports, because this is a separate instance from my previous one, I'll create a new folder. And as you can see, it's now syncing and performing a backup. Our final add-on will probably be one of the most important, which is a hacks installation. Hacks, I've already done a video for, links in the description below. Hacks allows you to add into the Home Assistant Community Store. It provides you with Home Assistant add-ons that have been developed by the community and are being published and for you to be able to use. To be able to install Hacks, you should have an SSH client already installed. Luckily, we've already done that. Go across into your terminal, which we added previously. Paste in the command that's in the description below or follow the step-by-step -step guide in the other video. Press Enter. Because I've already installed this, it will come back and it will say Hacks is already installed. But we'll follow through the instructions anyway. Remember to restart your Home Assistant. Moving across into Settings, going to System and Restarting. Once Home Assistant is restarted, we'll need to add in hacks into the integrations. Move through into Settings, go into Integrations. Add an integration. Search for Hacks. Acknowledge all of the selection boxes, press submit. It will ask you to navigate through to Hacks itself. Copy the code. You should have a GitHub account. If you don't have one, you should stop the video now and go and set up a GitHub account. Navigate across, paste in your code, press continue. Authorize Hacks. Congratulations, you're set up. Move back across into your Home Assistant's instance. Press finish. Hacks will now appear on the left hand side. As you can see, it hasn't actually got an icon at this point in time, and that's a cache problem. If you press Control F5, the icon will now appear for Hacks. And we're done. We can now see Hacks integrations, front end, add ons, etc. So, as I said at the start of the video, there are a plethora of other add-ons that you will require moving forward. Some more advanced add-ons that you'll require later on will be Toya. Toya allows you to access into thousands of cheap sensors that you can utilize in your Home Assistant. Node Red, which gives you a visual representation of how to link and build automations. ESP Home, which gives you access into building your own sensors. And for things like graphical interfaces, InfluxDB or Grafana, which we'll cover off in a future video.
So I hope you liked the video. I hope it was informative and it gave you a fundamentals of the add-ons that you require when you set up your Home Assistant for the first time. If you've got any comments, please drop them into the comments section below. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe, that would be amazing. And ding that bell so that you can get notifications of when new content is available for you. Until the next one, goodbye.